Hello everyone. Okay, so today I would like to show you how I'm going to make a bracelet using the wonderful Paisley silk screen that you can get from Tiny Pandora. And you can get this in the oval, you can get it in a strip, and you can also get it in the rectangle, and it goes right the way to the edge. And also I'm going to be using a small cutter. I believe this comes as a trio set from Sculpey. These tools, which I'll be making some little findings with, um, various names, cutter, snipper, round nose, plier I believe. This tool is a little bit different, it's got like a little hook on it and it's actually for being able to put a split ring onto something so I can show you that. I'm also going to be using uh, one of the trio bangle set that you can get from tinypandora.com and this is the middle size one, it doesn't really matter which one you use, um, I just found this one that worked out okay for me. I'm also going to be using some findings and these are just some uh, head pins and I'll show you what I do with those. I have got a magnetic clasp which is now clumped together with all the pieces that I'm going to be making um, and also some little jump rings as well. So let's get started on this. I have already done the silk screen um, just to save time more than anything else. And if anyone is, un is unsure of silk screening there is another video, another two or three videos I believe on the design team um, on YouTube and please do take a look because there's easy it's ever so easy to do so um, then let's move on with this so this is my piece silk screened and as you can see it is a lovely silk screen it's really really vibrant um, I've done this this is just literally some scrap clay or leftover clay I like to call it really scrap clay to me is grey this isn't so um, this was just some blues and some pink I have and I literally just sort of made a sort of Skinner blend really um, and the paint I've used is white but you can use any colour you wish depending on the clay you've got and I've also just textured I put another piece of just again some leftover clay blue clay on the back this was done on a number four and this was put through on a number three the top one and I just textured it with some funny stuff actually it was like stuff I got in some packing um, just ran it through the pasta machine just to give it something a little bit more of a texture on the back and all I'm going to do is cut some shapes and then I will show you how I input the findings so we'll just get started with that so I just want to make sure that I'm going to try and get all the sort of different slightly different shades of colouring and I do find that when I'm using any sort of metal cutters if you've got a piece of acrylic and this is um, the snakes and swirls acrylic so this is great so I'm just going to cut down on that. Sometimes it will come out with the cutter, sometimes it won't. And just move it around. And just about all of this can be used. You'd be surprised how much you can get out of one silk screen. The little pieces. And this one decided it wanted to stay in there, but that's fine. Just put that one down. Um, you can get so much out of a silk screen, it's surprising really. And uh, I will definitely be using the rest of it and once you've really sort of exhausted everything in it you could just run it back through your pasta machine and the paint just seems to sort of disappear really and I think I'll go here so I'm just going to take four because I've measured my wrist and four is ample for me but that is something you will need to do or I'd recommend that you do is that you just give your wrist a bit of a so I'm actually going to put these down here I'll show you what I do with them next. Just move this to one side. And then all I do is I just make sure that the edges, I don't know how well you can see that, but sometimes you get like a little bit of a ridge, and that's just from the cutter. So I'm just going to use the side of my thumb and I'm going to smooth them down. And also, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to round the edges off just gives it a little bit of a softer look so I'm going to do that to all these pieces and then once I have I will be back shortly to uh, carry on okay so as you can see I've actually embedded three little hooks into each of these pieces so I'm just going to show you how I actually did this and this is just a normal head pin I think it's probably about about two inches 
and all I do is I take off the little end, little flat piece, and I don't go right to the end because I like these little pieces because these are really, she says, as it flies off in the air. But what I normally do is I keep the little ends and I put them in a little bottle and I use them for steampunk so they're not wasted and um, I'm sure I'll come across that one at some point. And then all I do is I sort of vaguely cut them in half and then with some round nose pliers I just put them and just basically bend them round the pliers just to make a little hook bring them together and I always just twist one end just down slightly just so as it will grab the clay and then you can bring the two pieces together and uh, that will then be inserted in the clay and all I do when it comes to the clay is on these ones on this particular shape I put it sort of basically right in the top there and I've just made a slit first of all with my craft knife just enough to embed it and then I'll just take the little pin and the little hook I'm just going to insert that now into the top and just make sure it goes in enough and then I will tidy up those little bits on the inside and I'll use a tool which I believe is called the Wow It's Awesome or something like that I think from the Christie Friesen range I absolutely love it it's got the flat end here and the pointy end and I use that and I'll just go in and make sure that all of these are all tidied up and also that will also hold that hook in place and what I also do with these is if I'm not too sure where to put the hook the other side you can line them up on your um, glass mat which you can get from tinypandora.com as well and um, you can see where you need to do it and all I do is use my craft knife and just make a little mark that way I know it's going to be pretty much level. So I will carry on with this and I'll be back again shortly. So all I've done with these edges is I've literally just used the tool and I'm just sort of manipulating the clay so as it looks as if these have just been embedded but you can't see the gap so it just really holds. It also you know makes it a bit more secure. It's a little bit fiddly but you know just take your time um, I'm a strong believer of just you know making things look as neat as possible so I'll just make sure that that's all nicely in there because obviously these edges aren't the easiest of ones to get to if you hadn't silk screened it and you say you wanted to sand it so obviously the neater you can look at make it look the better and it is just a case of just slowly working the clay just to get as smooth an edge as possible and then I'll just make sure that it's all nice and even and then all I'm going to do is place these onto this form and it's just I want to make sure that I don't get the obviously the seam of the form and I do put these down quite and make sure they really have fixated themselves there or fixed there because I find that if they are down there's a less chance or less um, shiny appears on the bottom which is quite handy and you do find them with texture that sometimes you don't get so much of a shiny bottom <laughs> shiny bottoms um, shiny underside I should say let's be polite Trace come on um, and this just fits around here I mean obviously depending on what you want to do you don't have to have this you know curve I just like it because it does fit the wrists really quite comfortably um, and it's just nice but you can also with these bang uh, these forms you can work out the size that you want and um, you don't have to make you know you can you can make less of these and have maybe more beads in the middle if that's what you wanted or just have one and then have beads around the the edge of it so you know either side you don't have to make them all but I just think it's quite nice and once it's on I will also give it a coat of deep shine on the top and that really helps to hold that lovely silk screen in place. So once you've got those properly laid down and you're happy then they just need to go in the oven and I will bake this at 275 probably for about 40-45 minutes because the clay although it's not too thick but just to be 100% sure. So as soon as that's baked we'll be back. OK, 
okay so my piece is obviously out of the oven and what I've done is I've actually covered each one in some deep shine and anyone that doesn't know how to use deep shine there are other videos on the uh, tiny Pandora site that you can see but it is really easy to use and it gives such a beautiful covering and also it will protect the acrylic paint and I've also put my little jump rings in between on the hooks that we that I've applied in between the, the polymer clay and uh, that gives it a nice nice look I think you can like I say if you wanted to make it a bit bigger or it needs to be a bit bigger um, or even you didn't want to use one of these pieces you could incorporate some beads so that's entirely up to you um, I like the fact that it's it, it will lay nicely on your wrist and I'll show you that in just a minute so what I'm going to do here and I put like a split ring in this metallic uh, in this magnet piece so I've just got this funny little tool that's got like a little hook end to it and I'm just going to open this up and I find the easiest way to do this is to sort of do it put it on sideways if that makes sense and you'll just get you'll just feel it just sit in there and once it does I get rid of this tool and then I'll just get my pliers and I just ease of course it's not going to work so I want to show you on camera so it's just a case of this little tool here that just splits the two rings apart and then just put this one sideways and you'll feel it sort of click and then if you just turn it that's what I forgot to do and then all you need to do is just turn the little split ring round until obviously it gets to the point where it will close it and that way that's a really good secure fit and not only is it secure but it just makes it so much easier especially if you have to put it on yourself so there we go and that's just a lovely fit and I just think for a very simple little bracelet it has a lovely pattern I love that paisley pattern and it's just really easy to do um, you don't need many tools obviously you can you can make it how you want to um, the, the deep shine you can get from Tiny Pandora, the silk screen you can get from Tiny Pandora, obviously the little form I use you can get from Tiny Pandora too, and tools for putting things together, you know, these are just things that I've acquired over the years, you don't have to have the same things, obviously there's, you know, other ways of making attachments, you don't need to use this sort of clasp if you don't want to, I just like the little split rings because I just know it's a little bit more secure, but um, yeah, so I hope you like it. And uh, sorry, I hope the light is not too bad. It's very difficult here. I've either got bright light coming in the front ways or trying to fight with it coming from the back ways. So anyway, I hope you enjoy that and uh, I shall see you all again soon.